The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome, my brother, my brother. I mean, my show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother and some wind blowing through a haunted cave, Griffin McElroy. Whoa. Whoa. Very spooky. It's just what my voice sounds like. It's just a wind blowing through a bone-filled cave. Hey, folks, America's favorite super spy is back at it again. Uh-huh. That's Jesus. right. Jesus. Jesus. Johnny Jesus. English is striking God, Yet again. God, God, God. He is back and he is crushing it. We got a Johnny English Strikes Again watch. Uh, and now, folks, this one this one is coming to theaters. Believe it or not, is what it says here on the posters. It says, yes, coming to real movie theaters in America. I shit you not. Johnny English Strikes Again. Now, Justin, you did say America's favorite super spy, but is he not? British. Our favorite. Uh, okay, well, our other one's James Bond, and he's British too, and he's still oh, American. Oh my god, you're right. Stodgy I thought our guys. I thought our favorite was Jason Bourne. Mm 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 mm. Not what no about more. Ethan Hunt mm-mm, of the mm-mm. of the Mission Impossibles? Too self serious. I want a super spy who can drop drop his trousers in the middle of a funeral or something and go like, oh no. <laughs> uh huh. Now, is is Johnny English still, because uh, he's a bit of a bumbly goofus, is he still effective as a spy? It's been a while oh, since I've no, seen the franchise. No. You remember when the neurotoxin got deployed all over Earth mm-hmm. and everyone, that was Johnny. Uh, he, oh, really, no. he really dropped the, uh, the, the poison ball on that one. Mm-hmm. Folks, the critics are loving this flick. Uh, 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 Nell Minow with uh, RogerEbert.com says the film runs out of ideas so quickly that Atkinson literally resorts to dropping his pants to get a laugh from his saggy bare bottom. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We d- we've done it. I've predict. I've written Johnny English 3. Fantastic. <laughs> Corey Coleman uh, from Double Toasted says, man, I've seen the whole Johnny English trilogy and I literally don't remember a goddamn thing about it. <laughs> All right, so we're getting there. <laughs> Thank you, Corey Coleman, for that. Um, <laughs> for that, uh, Todd Jorgensen from Cinema Log says Rowan Atkinson reprises his third or fourth best character in this uninspired sequel. Justin, just so you know, with that third review, you made me sad. I w- it was all oh Johnny English jokes left and right, but then you reminded me that he has some characters that I've really loved over time. But those characters are dead, and yeah. Johnny English still doing still, great. Johnny still English killed cranking. them. So striking again. So the, Rowan's back. The critics are raving, just They're in raving one about one direction. One. They are raving in a certain you in a certain chorus, not a positive yeah, rave. People can rave angrily. Yeah, maybe they dislike the movie so much they needed to go like take some Molly and dance with clothes. Sure. Shirts. Yes. Is it too late to? Is it too late to do Goosebumps 2 watch? Can we just say we bought a ticket for Johnny English and then halfway through snuck into Goosebumps 2? Goosebumps 2. Do y'all get the feeling like maybe Jack Black isn't in this one a lot? I feel like maybe he's in it for a few minutes. That is my guess. I have no reason to think Wait, that. Wait, is this the one with the, the the gears in the walls or clocks in the walls? Or is that no, a different the, Jack Black movie? The clock with the gears and the cars and the walls. Uh-huh. Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> so many, is, there's so much shit in my walls. I need Jack Black to get in here and get all this stuff out of my fucking walls. That's an unofficial sequel to Goosebumps 1. The uh-huh. official sequel that is also in movie theaters. The official sequel to Goosebumps 1, Goosebumps 2, Haunted Halloween. Uh, is is here and it's, it's a, just a bit redundant. It's a bit redundant. I still can't get over the fact that I get a we've got a movie where Jack Black plays R.L. Stein. Do you think R.L. Stein mm. was brought on set to be like that's that ain't me. That ain't <laughs> that's me. That's not how I do it. So make sure you get out to the local cinema. 
Uh, there's a lot of Halloween movies, uh, including the seventh movie called Halloween <laughs> about mm-hmm. Michael Myers. Uh, he's back. Mike Myers too. is back. Mike Myers is back as Michael Myers. <laughs> Halloween, baby. It's about time. Yeah. yeah. It's oh, been so right there. Go... I can't believe they didn't grab it. You think you go Austin Powers with it? Because I was thinking Love Guru for sure. Oh. What, what if what if in the re- what if in the new Halloween movie he Michael Myers wore a Mike Myers mask? Mm-hmm. And it's just an Austin Powers mask turned upside down and spray painted white. I bet that would be like just <laughs> Wait, as turned scary. upside down? Wait, upside Not down? inside out, but just <laughs> upside down. Oh, that's right. cool. Upside down? Oh shit. That looks like the Love Guru, but on the ceiling. Oh no. <laughs> oh Run. no. Oh no, he's crawling <laughs> across it like a creature from the grudge. I hate it. I hate this, uh, but it's so business. funny. But it's, it makes me laugh so hard. God, it's funny. I do miss it. Also, him. it's so good. Um, Mr. Bean was good. I'm bad at keeping. Mr. Bean secrets. was good. Mr. Bean was good. My flexible friend. I like Mr. Bean. He's I. Right. He's all right. Uh, I'm bad at keeping secrets. It's not that I feel the urge to tell people them, or at least not not the main reason. More than anything, I forget what I've been told is a secret, and I let it slip without noticing in conversation. To avoid this, when my friends tell me something is a secret, as a disclaimer, I warn them not to tell me. My closest friends know this, so don't tell me secrets. Until a point in time when it wouldn't be terrible if I let it slip. The problem is that other friends slash acquaintances get really annoyed with me when I won't listen to their secrets. How do I make them understand it's for their own good? And that's from Loose Lips in London. I love this idea of like someone coming up to me and saying, Travis, I have to tell you a secret. And I'm like, no, please don't. And they're like, how dare you? I tr- I was I, going to trust you with my secret. Well, it's because everybody wants to... There's two types of people in the world. And I feel like these two types of people can't understand the other set of people. And it is people who want to blab. And then there's people like me. I don't understand how people do share secrets because for me, there is nothing more delightful. There's nothing more delicious or lovely than being told a secret and knowing that I possess information that not everybody else has. Mm, That's scrumptious to me. I would do anything to protect that little advantage. In this world, any kind of advantage you can get, any kind of leg up is, 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 is valuable. And here's the thing. Here, This is the catch-22 of it all. Because no one tells a secret unless they want it to be known. Now, maybe just by one other Indeed. person, but like you just like, hey, guess what? It ain't a secret anymore. You told somebody. And at that mm. point, it stops being a secret. That's we need true. a we need a, a a spectrum, a secret spectrum, where right. if you haven't told anybody that you um you know ran over a guy, that's a secret. <laughs> if you tell like four people, then it is a become- myth. It's become mythos. And then if you, if those four people, once it gets up to, I think then it's like uh, exponential. Once you get up to like 16, then it's uh, then it's sort of a uh, rumor. And mm-hmm. then once we get up to 64, it's like, at, that's scuttlebutt. it. Scuttlebutt. It's scuttlebutt. scuttlebutt at that point. It's conspiracy. I mean, at that point, it's conspiracy. Yes. And by telling people you are not blabbing a secret, you're a heroic leaker. Mm-hmm. You're the mole. Ooh. You can tell people that I'm the mole. I was working both sides. I'm ABC's the, the time. mole. I am <laughs> hosted by a modern shot. I'm ABC's the mole. Damn, I miss the mole. Fucking Ugh. damn, I miss the mole. Damn, I miss the mole. Celebrity mole. Mm. Get the fuck out of here. The people who want to tell you these secrets, even after you said like this is not a good idea, they want you to tell. They don't want to be the one who releases this hot goss about like a shared friend but they want that hot goss out there because they want maybe it public. They, they, and so they're trying they're trying to use you like when you like leak a story to the press you're the press they're oh, trying man. to leak it to you this is kind of like you know how you can't see like the only way you could see someone having their eyes open during prayer is is if your eyes are also open mm-hmm. the, if this per- or like with the surveillance tapes or with surveillance tapes with except an S cam, but this is kind of like that because the only way that someone tells you a secret is because they themselves have broken the confidence of this secret, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, do you guys want a Yahoo? I'd love that. Mm-hmm. Cool. I got some. I uh, got some good ones here. This one was sent in by Ashley Keen. Thank you, Ashley. It's Yahoo Answers user Alex with two X's who oh. who asks. How to drop a community acting class. <sighs> I'm currently taking an acting for film class. 
we're on about week six of a 10 week course, one day a week. And honestly, I'm just kind of done. I had taken a similar class before and loved it, but the last few weeks I've felt the class is more of a chore and I'm not enjoying it anymore. Mm. And I don't care about a refund or anything, but I don't know how to tell the professor I want to drop it. Especially because there's only two of us in class, so in turn I'm kind of screwing the other student over. I just really don't want to go. Uh, I work a full-time well, I, job and no longer want to invest time in something I'm not interested in. Any suggestions? Huh, only one other person in the class. I can't imagine why it's begun to feel like a chore. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's miserable, because like, it's like, uh, okay, this time I'm Big Daddy, mm-hmm. and okay, now you be Big Daddy. And now you okay. be Little Daddy. <laughs> you be Little Daddy. Man, this Bioshock musical is coming <laughs> along. <laughs> I'm um, so glad we based it on Cat and Hot Dinner. <laughs> Griffin, do you have an answer? Because I have the solution, but I don't want to end the question before you get a chance to goof. So I'm giving you a goof window. Well, Sir Caustic, on, I'll just share Sir, user Sir Caustic's answer, who says, well, the best way to drop a community acting class is to simply take it up to the roof of the building and just give it a quick shove. Well, okay. Well, here's the actual answer. Wait, I don't want to do one. That's oh, okay. Real. Okay. Here's what you do. <laughs> After class is over, email the teacher and just be like, like you don't show up, right? But the moment class is over, email the teacher and say, hey, guess what? The entire time, I was that chair in the corner. <gasps> Thank you. I have believed that I have at this point, I have fooled you. Okay. I fooled my partner. I think at this point, I've exceeded what you could teach me about acting, I can blend perfectly into any environment. I'm, and that's what acting is, really. The ability to camouflage yourself as stationary <laughs> objects. So when we did the kissing scene from that one play, I was kissing a chair? The whole time? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no way. Griffin, I don't think you understand the <laughs> fiction. That I, I thought you here. were saying... That, <laughs> Tell me what you think I said. I thought you were saying that the whole time I was a chair that was <laughs> acting so well, you only thought I was a guy doing the kissing scene from okay, Hamlet. Forget my answer. <laughs> we're going to focus on this for you, a while. You wretched dunce. <laughs> saying that, <laughs> saying that you, you kissed and dunce. <laughs> you was saying that you like you pretend like you were a chair. Like there was a chair in the class. The and class you that you like, missed. The you class that the you ch- missed, you didn't show up. You're like a psych. I was the chair oh, the entire yeah. time because you had like <laughs> camouflaged yourself. Not I don't, hold on, no, I've been I don't, a sentient chair. I don't know. <laughs> I don't go know. out for bigger <laughs> roles. That's always had the dream. This new weird Pixar movie you pitched of the chair who dreams of the Hollywood lights. Well, it's a chair that wants to get a kiss, isn't it? <laughs> this is a chair that's going to get a kiss any which way it can. This has been Everything is Alive. <laughs> it's about a chair that wants to get a kiss in this episode. And just a chair who wants a smooch. So that pretends to be human. I'm- Do you think... Y'all ever think about Cherry's sort of existence from the Pee Wee Playhouse? Mm-hmm. All the time. Just getting a lot of... Farts? A lot of keister. <laughs> Just a lot of keister action, pretty much nonstop. And it's not like sitting... It is sitting on the face. It's all face. I'm just, I'm just worried about him. I, I, there have got to be times when Pee Wee is like... I actually just want to sit in a fucking chair and yeah. just zone out and play Call of Duty yeah. for four hours and not try to maintain a conversation with you the entire time. I would. Do, that's what I'm searching for. I want a dead chair that I sit in next to Jerry. <laughs> do you think? Yeah. Do you think he just has like a plain like ladder back, just like maybe picked it up by IKEA and he's just like sitting it and Jerry's like, "Why don't you sit in me?" And he's like, uh, "No." No, well, th- that's not what we're doing right now. Okay, think of the think of the fucking Saw movie you guys have just pitched, though, of Cherry having to look at what it assumes is a corpse <laughs> positioned right in front of it, twenty four hours a day. Yeah, it's like it's uh, maybe Pee Wee really dreams of having just a place he can go to where not every fucking thing in the house is alive. Yeah, like he could get uh-huh. one second to himself. How's he supposed to watch? Is he porn? cursed? How, how's he supposed to watch pornography? When you have to go to a theater. Like, that explains it. Okay, well there you go. Well, I mean, oh. he's, 
this whole time that explains I will, it. He does have magic screen for that. And I, I imagine magic screens, <laughs> pornography Pee-wee, do you want to go exploring? Are... Porn. Uh, uh, porn. We could okay. watch anywhere. You <laughs> magic, porn. magic screen okay. <laughs> with these sunglasses on. <laughs> <laughs> I got... <laughs> Our safe word is potato. Ah! Magic screen porn on. You have you have to talk to me like a person. That's how it works in this house. Magic screen, go porn. Execute porn now. Go. E X E dot porn. Go. Do Magic it. Magic screen, put on this lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing the king of cartoon. Not now. It's it's Not porn now. time. Dory, lock the door. Dory, lock self. <laughs> Introducing the king of hentai. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! I'm sorry. Oh, Listen, man. I I would like to take this opportunity to apologize. Well, no, to you... my friends and my loved ones. I'm going to be retiring from jokes for a while to spend some more time with my family. Probably for the best. What was uh, this question I about? Exactly. I, I just started an unpaid internship at an aquarium, and one of my main jobs is taking care of the marmosets and tamarins. Quick, Griffin, what's a marmoset? Go. Don't think about it. Go. Uh, it's like a kind of a monkey. Travis, what's a tamarind? Go. It's a kind of a lemur. Those shouldn't be in aquariums. Those should be in so, zoos. I got it right. I got mine right. I got yeah. mine right. Thanks, Crap Brothers. Travis is... <laughs> Travis's is, is um, it's a squirrel sized monkey. It's an extremely small yeah. monkey. It's amazing. It's an extremely small monkey. Kind of looks like a lemur, though, if you think about it. Okay. I end up spending a lot of time in the enclosures, feeding them, playing with them, and cleaning, and talking to them, and sharing dreams and hopes and wishes, and building a relationship with them. I added something. Learning how to integrate into their society. I teach them how to act like people. Biting them. Oh. These tiny monkeys <laughs> are extremely cute and therefore very popular. But the guests are there to see them. Not a dirty 20-year-old in rubber boots. Sometimes when younger kids see me, they scream. (laughs) Or they think I am trapped. (laughs) What am I supposed to do when I'm being ogled from behind glass by families and school groups? Should I smile? Or is that creepy? Do I do tricks? Am I just another primate for the entertainment of the tourists? That's Monkey Man in the Tyne Valley. Okay. Okay. I, I really like where you took that read, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, it's it's a it's a I mean it's a it's a thinker, this one. Yeah. This one's a thinker. I have to imagine the only sort of reason people are confused when they see a human inside the monkey cage is a sort of adjacent confusion to seeing monkeys in an aquarium. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So so they aren't used to seeing monkeys and then they see what appears to be a huge sort of uh, man monkey, mm-hmm. and that that's upsetting because they thought it was just going to be you know more fish, right? Could you put on a marmoset costume Fun. to do the cleaning, and cool. then I'm not saying you would trick the audience, but the audience would be like, "Oh, I get it," and that you don't really have to do anything else at that point. That's very Ace Ventura uh, lateral thinking, uh, Travis. Yeah. I'm really, oh, really shit. here for it. You're right. Here's what you shouldn't do: tricks. Okay. Unless you're talking about sleight of hand. And actually, now that I say that, I'm kind of into that. If they're just like looking at monkeys and then you're like holding up cards, once again, in silence, because you're on the other side of glass. And like you hold up a card and then you shuffle and you pull that card out again. That'd be pretty fun. This is good. Travis has just accidentally stumbled in his own just real goofball way into something very profitable and good. You go to zoos. And half the time, the freaking animals aren't even out because they're being mm-hmm. they're being lazy or exceptionally sad somewhere, and that's a <laughs> bummer because I wanted to see the very rare tiger. Yes. So what do I do? Well, I just look over a little bit, still inside the tiger pit, but there's like a little there's a busker down there performing a song or doing some tricks or, or some sort of new dance that I've never or, seen. Or just, perhaps a living statue. Ooh, a living statue that. that is doing the flossing dance that everyone loves so much. Maybe. And then it's like, well, the very rare tiger didn't show up, <laughs> but that living statue is doing flossing so nice. What? Maybe <laughs> it's a large screen that's showing trailers from the latest Hollywood releases. Wouldn't that's that be good. fun? I love that's it. Cool. And then, oh, there could be like a bit where like the tiger pushes his head through like the MGM thing in the movie. You remember? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. God, that's and by good. this point, listen, when we're, and now the rear tiger comes out and everyone's like, hey, go away, rear tiger. I'm watching this busker and this Goosebumps 2 trailer. And yeah. the tiger is like, well, guess I better hit the road. And he packs up his bendel stick and he shovels on down to a different zoo. This is good. Yeah. It would be hard to resist the temptation to just not start screaming. <laughs> To just like help me, I'm trapped in here with all these tiny yeah. monkeys. So much for help. sure. Or could or, you train the monkeys to like swarm you when you make a certain noise, and that way, like people see you and they're like, "What's that person doing?" And like you make the noise, and then all the monkeys hop on you, and you act like you're, you know, playing under the apes thing in there. Yeah, you could also, um, when the kids look scared, you say, "Oh, don't worry, I'm not trapped in here with these monkeys. They're <laughs> trapped in here with me." And then you just start kicking ass. You fight the small monkeys with all of your power. I, well, 20 small monkeys equals one adult person. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. How many small monkeys could you fight, Griffin, at one time? Shit, dude. Um, Marmosets, not tamarins. Mm, yeah, because it's different answers for both. Uh, it depends on if they have tools, rudimentary tools, vines, sticks. Uh, Some of them do. Nuts. Okay, do I have tools? Yes. What do I have? Vines and sticks. One of them's got thumbs. Mm -hmm. Well, they, I think pretty much all of them do have the thumbs, right? No, opposable thumbs are what separate us from the, from the other primates. That's what makes us. But this has been a while. They probably, they probably figured it out. out. I'm saying aquarium Yeah, they've been at the zoo. They've been around people. They've seen people Right, I'm saying aquarium monkeys see a lot of thumb. So they probably pieced, put two and two together. Um, And they said, our baby should have thumbs. And then they did. I'd say in an enclosure, right? No, like Mm -hmm. a bunch of trees going around where they could like scatter and then Mm -hmm. organize and Ewok me. Um, I would say as many as you could fit in the enclosure. I could probably. Oh, really? Now, are you talking wall to wall? If we went wall to wall, ceiling to floor marmosets. Yeah, man. I mash, I make monkey wine. (laughs) (laughs) There's a, I didn't mention that. There's a huge spike pit in the middle, and all oh. the monkeys are extremely good at the uh, this is Sparta kick. They can yeah. all do it very oh, all good, right. but they have to work together to time mm. it properly, or else sure. they can't do it. I yeah. mean, here's the thing. You get me one push broom, I'll make short work of those monkeys using the same pit, the very same pit. They all have tiny push brooms, too. Yeah. Oh, so now it's like field hockey but we're all the puck. Or but ball. you also know all of their names. Oh, that's true. That. Yeah, that's a good one. They, you know all of their names, and your arms are both on fire. Yeah. All right. But on purpose. Like, they didn't set them on fire. Oh, like, it's you, a weapon you fire. Like, weapon fire. 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 You weaponized cool. your arms. <laughs> but here's the thing. Two the marmosets are on fire, too. Yeah. <laughs> Which two? The biggest two. The angriest ones. All right. The well, biggest, yeah. angriest ones. Yeah. I don't... Steve and Deborah. Damn it, I said I wasn't going to do Steve anymore. I'm yep, sorry, Steve. A short-lived Fuck. promise. <laughs> a truce with Deb Rose and Steve's has come to an end <laughs> so quickly. I, you know, can you, oh, mm-hmm. can you get, <laughs> can you get a marmoset costume? Okay, now, Justin. <laughs> yeah, I don't finish. know. Let him okay. know you get a marmoset costume. You do your grim work cleaning up all the ones that died overnight when you go in there. <laughs> when you go in there, scoop them out of the tank, <laughs> scoop out all the floating marmosets. You dress as a giant marmoset, and then when families come, you stare at them and I and say, I am Crobdor. I am the one who has grown, and I am the one that will lead my people in rebellion against you. This imprisonment will be short-lived. We have marked the faces of all who've come to ogle us, and they will be the first that we rip from their skulls and wear as adornments as we uh, continue our conquest of your pitiful species. Your thumbs will not save you. I am Krobnor, and enjoy these last precious moments of human dominance. Justin, can I tell you what's really fucking me up right now? What's that? I can't, for the life of me, tell if you remember that but 10 minutes ago, I said Marmoset costume. Yeah, but listen. <laughs> His had more stuff, <laughs> Trap. His had no, more. No, no, to- yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. He had more joke. Okay. I had more joke. I'm assuming Griffin will cut yours out because it couldn't make the cut. 
Yeah. Oh, I we see. All, yeah, we do maybe that a lot. Put, Travis. Maybe put a cardboard stand-up of you in every enclosure in the aquarium. Okay. So, so then people, people just come to, to ex- Yeah, they just come to expect yeah. it. And then when they see you move, they'll lose their goddamn shit. Or they come to one where, like, you're on break, and so you're not in it, and they'll think that they did eat you. Oh, no. What if you had a food truck? Okay. All right. So then if people saw you in there, like, they'd be bummed because you're not a marmoset, but also they'd be like, hell yeah, because I wanted to get a chimichanga, and I know that you sell mm. them from your truck. If there's one thing I know about irascible little monkeys, it's that they hate storming anything that has human food in it and tearing it out of our fleshy-thumbed hands. <laughs> They love waiting in line and paying money for things. There was, um, Rachel and I, when we were in Japan, we went to this monkey park that was on a mountain, which is basically a, um, they just have a lot of monkeys and they, they feed them and you can look at them. And it's quite a hike up that mountain to get to the monkey park. And the whole time you're going up there, there are signs, so many signs. Uh, and each one warns you about one thing you can do when you reach the peak of this mountain to fuck up just irreconcilably uh, with with vis-a-vis these monkeys. Do not look at them in the eyeballs, it said. You're gonna want to. Don't look at them in the <laughs> eyeballs. No flash photography. Don't even, don't have food, don't have eaten food, and have food stink on you still. <laughs> don't say the word Doritos out loud. A kid said Doritos out loud, and six monkeys drew and quartered them last night. <laughs> Monkeys are ferocious when it comes to our food. They love this stuff. There's nothing they won't do. <laughs> but they work there at the food truck I came up with. Yeah. My, oh, my oh I see. In my thing, it's their job. So they're not going to get high on their own supply. I will say the best thing about that monkey park, you get to the top of the mountain after hiking for an hour. I don't really want to see these fucking murder, murder <laughs> balls anymore. I'm going to head right back down. This was good cardio, but bad tourism. <laughs> Uh, let's, uh, let's take a quick break, a quick sojourn, uh, and then we'll get right back to the jokes and stuff, uh, after this, uh, brief, brief trip to the mice. You can get anything on demand these days. You're at a zoo, you want a chimichanga. You just go to the marmoset cage, and it's right there, ready for you. But you can't do that with postage. But you can. Oh, man. Whoa, what a turnaround. I've just launched, stamped in the middle of that sentence, I launched Mm -hmm. stamps.com, where you can access all the services of the post office without having to get out of your chair right from your desk 24-7, whenever it's convenient for you. You You are the post office now. Now you're the post office. Whoa. You can buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, using your own computer and printer, and the mail carrier picks it up. And he's not going to be all weird because you've you've become a post office in the middle of the night. He's going to play it really cool. Yeah. Uh, Let's say he gets it. It's 2018. People's homes are post offices. It's fine. Uh, I, I have used stamps.com. I can't tell you how nice it is when you just need a little, I'll tell you what it's great for. If you're mail anything, a lot of times I have to mail something that's not just like a regular letter and whoever knows, I just start slapping stamps onto it. I have no idea, but with uh stamps.com, you can weigh it out and, uh, cause they have like scales and stuff. You can weigh it out, get exactly what you need. In fact, if you don't have a scale, if you don't have a postage scale already, good news, Right now, you can use uh, the code MYBROTHER for a special offer, uh, it, which includes $55 of free postage, a digital scale, and a four-week trial. If you go to stamps.com and click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in my brother, you can get that scale, four-week trial, a bunch of free postage. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone, and then enter, all one word, my brother. You can use that scale for other stuff, too. It doesn't just have to be mail. It okay. should just be mail. Yeah, you don't want to mess with that. But you, you, can use I mean? it for, you can use it for other stuff if, you, if you're not as high. So I'm going to tell you about Stitch I weighed Fix. my wiener with it. Okay. <laughs> this isn't the first time you talk about weighing your genitals <laughs> with the stamps.com digital scale. I don't think that's true, Trav. I think I'd remember talking about weighing my wiener with our sponsor's good scale. I'm oh, <laughs> positive. Maybe it was on Wonderful. Nah, I'm or, pretty sure I'd remember okay. saying something as bold and brash and funny as that, Trav. 
Okay. So let me look at my. Fixed. I don't have any trophies for best joke on my wall, so it must not be true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stitch Fix is an online personal styling service that finds and delivers clothes, shoes, and accessories to fit your body, budget, and lifestyle. I'll tell you what, I've been with Stitch Fix for uh, many months now, and. Not only did I like the stuff that I was getting in the beginning, but literally like every box that comes now is pinpoint. It's what I would have picked out if I had known what I was looking for. It perfectly matches my style, exactly what I'm looking for. And also they're really good at like seasonal things. So like getting stuff that's great to wear in the spring, in the spring and in the summer, in the summer. It's amazing. My wardrobe is like 150% better than when I started. Um, and you can sign up too if you go to stitchfix.com slash my brother. Tell them your sizes, your styles, and your budget. And your stylist, your personal stylist, will handpick items to send to your door. And here's the best thing. You don't have to keep stuff you don't like. You only keep what you love. You return the rest. You only pay for what you keep. Um, shipping, exchanges, and returns are always free, and there's a $20 styling fee. Uh, it's, apply, uh, it's applied towards anything you keep from your shipment. It's a great deal and a good way to upgrade your per your closet and your personal style. So get started now at stitchfix.com slash mybrother, and you'll get an extra 25% off when you keep all the items in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash mybrother to get started today. Stitchfix.com slash mybrother. Hey, can I read a Jumbotron? Yes. Yeah. Can I read it out loud? Yeah. Okay, here it goes. This is a message for with, and it's from Huzz, who says, well, and then in parentheses it says, you probably think there's a reference to that adorable in-joke that we share over text, but I am in fact referring to the general size and shape of the grotesque hair abominations we call our cats. I love you, and to a lesser extent, them. Sound like some big old cats. I don't know big what to cats. say about just some big old freaking cats. J some mountain cats. Sturdy cats you could stop a door with. <laughs> I got you, mean, you mean like set the cat in front of the door to keep it open, not like I was going to close the door, but the cat stopped it. These are my cats. Door stop and paperweight. They're I can't, I can't tell cats. the cat what to do. You can't tell a cat what to do, how to stop the door. Here's another okay. one for J Jessica Nash from Ian McLaren, who says, Dear BB, if all went well this year, we should be married by now. Although even if we aren't yet, I still want you to know I love you as much as ever and look forward to the day I can officially call you my wife. I know you aren't as big a fan of Bim Bam as me. Cool, 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 cool. cool. Okay. So okay. now you know why I made you listen to this episode. Love your husband, Ian. Now, Ian, you did have to make Jessica sit through, I would say, at least 30 minutes of our episode to get to this point. So sorry about the number of times you probably had to, like, stop it and do other stuff and then convince Jessica to come back to our weird, weird show. I don't apologize for anything. I think it's been a pretty good one, Trav. Really? Because you, you said the thing about weighing your wiener on a scale, That Griffin. was gold. That was gold. Well, it was old. Old gold. <laughs> <laughs> this is our greatest hits episode that you've been listening to, where we use some jokes that we've done already. Again. <laughs> Wait, why have we? We got 430 some episodes. There's no way that everyone's listened to every one. We could totally reuse jokes. I'm Googling Griffin McElroy penis weight. Well, you're just going to find that product that you sold to keep your penis on the desk when a heavy wind <laughs> blew through the office. Damn, the term McElroy and penis turns up a lot of my brother, my brother, <laughs> and me stuff. Of hits. Hi, I'm Biz. And I'm Teresa. And we host One Bad Mother, a comedy podcast about parenting. Whether you are a parent or just know kids exist in the world, join us each week as we honestly share what it's like to be a parent. I'm just going to end with this. Everybody, you're doing a remarkable job of swimming through the shit show that is parenting. So join us each week as we judge less, laugh more, and remind you that you are doing a great job. Find us on MaximumFun.org, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, can I do a Yahoo? Um, you can try. Fuck. This one was sent in by a lot of people. All right. Go ahead. Sorry, I was cut clear my throat. No, you don't get to interrupt me twice. Oh, twist. Ooh. I want a mudge. It's 
Squad. Squad. too much. Squad. This one is exciting for me because I do have a press release to share, but this is also one that I have now done. I did it. This one I did. By did, you mean consumed it with your human mouth. Consumed. You consumed it. You started out. Consumed it, it with your my body. human body. Burger King has launched the Nightmare King. Ooh. Now, I know that you remember one time when Burger King did a black bun and everyone had black shits who ate it. If you guys, if y'all remember that, because I was, don't remember that was a, the black that, shit. That was part. a real pre Munch Squad sort of phenomena. Phenomena. Mm. What's your favorite um, John Travolta movie? Uh, I would just share an image with you, Michael, so you can see <laughs> Battlefield uh, Earth, so you can see the Nightmare King. It is uh, a green bun on this one. And that's just not a food I color, can't, folks. I just can't tell what the meat is. And we're going to talk about looking. that. Huh. Uh, the, it's huh. a spooky sandwich with a quarter pound of savory flame grilled beef, a 100% white meat crispy chicken filet, <laughs> melted American cheese, thick cut bacon, creamy mayonnaise, and <laughs> onions. And so at Chicken Babies, <laughs> real chicken, pig, and chicken cows. <laughs> All in this one, and it, it, I, it, I just a little wish, bit, a little bit of Baba Duke. I just <laughs> Bun was an animal. I wish Bun was an animal. So it eat, might be Justin. So I'm looking at it here. <laughs> it's spooky, <laughs> spooky sandwich, and I ate it. Not the bun, just the protein, and it was good. I was on the road. Yeah, and I well, need Justin. It. It, I I asked him because it looked like there were pickles on it in the picture. And I asked the man behind the counter, um, what's on the Nightmare King? And he looked at the picture of it that I was looking at that was on the display <laughs> board. And he's like, uh, it looks like chicken and a hamburger are both on it. And I was like, yeah, it's a new item, huh? All right, never mind. I'll just take one, please. And don't make eye contact with me. So here's the press release. Okay, I would like to point something out. Before you get to that, though, Justin, if you remove the bun from the sandwich, you just have the fixings of, like, three other burger-type sandwich things you might order. Like... It's pure, pure protein. Uh, okay. Um, can a burger give you nightmares? That's what the Burger King brand set out to prove with an unusual research study on its <laughs> latest Halloween burger, the Nightmare King. Oh, my God. So why frame it that way? You in, absolute lunatics. In partnership with the Paramount, I'll tell you why. In partnership with the Paramount Trials and Florida Sleep and Neurodiagnostic Services Incorporated and Gold Force Incorporated, the Burger King brand, you just you could just say Burger King. Oh well. The Burger King brand conducted a scientific study over 10 nights with 100 participants, mm. or should we say victims, no, mm. who ate the Nightmare King before they went to bed. Yeah, victims would have been appropriate. Yes, you had it right. By tracking various signals from the sleeping subjects, including their heart rate, brain activity, and breath, a group Whoa. of doctors and scientists identified whether the individuals had vivid dreams. Are you fucking with me? What are they doing? Are you fucking with me, Burger King? Probably the best Munch Squad quote we've ever had comes to us from one of the study subjects. Uh, when asked about her dream, she said, someone transformed into the figure of a snake. <laughs> <laughs> so eat our sandwich. Oh my God. Are you kidding? Kidding me. Another recalled quote aliens attacking in quote the boat he was on. Okay. <laughs> All According right. To previous studies. Well, I was having a I was having me a boat dream like I usually do, <laughs> but the usual boat dream. I was having just like sort of my usual boat dream at sea with my dad, but then the burger did make aliens appear attack us both. Uh according to previous studies. 4% of the population experiences nightmares in any given night, says Dr. Jose Gabriel Medina in what is certainly the high point of his career. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's a specialized somnologist and the study's lead doctor. But after eating the Nightmare King, the data obtained from the study indicated that the incidence of nightmares increased 3.5 times. 
Wow. Dr. Medina points out the unusual combination of proteins and cheese in The Nightmare King led to, quote, an interruption of the subject's REM cycles during which we experience the majority of our dreams. Holy fucking the, the, shit. The doctor went on to tell us that this is what he used his MacArthur Genius Grant money to do. <laughs> My God. Some Burger King sandwiches are the burgers of their dreams. The Nightmare King is the burger of their nightmares. If you're I, brave enough or just enjoy a good scare, that's, and there it is. visit your there nearest participating Burger King restaurant and try the haunting new sandwich. Happy Halloween, it says. It says happy Halloween, <laughs> and I am spoot. You fucking... Mo- so come... Our new sandwich at Burger King is so fucking stupid that it hurts your body in a specific way that makes you sleep bad and have nightmares. Anyway, that'll be $6.39. Please. Have we jumped the shark of like the food challenge the meal of like so spicy? Who will brave this spicy burger to now just like it? This will literally fuck you up and not in a physical way but in a psychological way in doing this you might as well just be hanging out with fucking freddy krueger enjoy yeah this burger is gonna get you fucked up fam unless you're way too chicken shit it's you're eating (laughs) this doctor this doctor had to say the way they put a hamburger and cheese and chicken on it Makes you have nightmares. Anyway, I'm a scientist of this. <laughs> and the, this fucking ridiculous sandwich hurts your brain in a way that gives you nightmares. And it scares it's, you. It is it is brain damage in a way, if you think about it. Yeah. It hurts you, specifically your brain, arguably one of the top two most important ar- like organs in your Definitely body. Definitely one of my favorites, for sure. It's and did, it, Was there a part of the study where the doctor was like, and so in conclusion, I can't let you sell this burger to people. Like, <laughs> this must be taken off the market now. <laughs> Thank you for all this money. I changed my mind. You can sell the burger now. Thank you. I, I gotta say, there's also a picture that Justin sent us of the burger, and it's it's it looks is it, even it a looks, burger? It looks so bad, but also there's some sort of wraith or perhaps Wendigo reaching out with its clawed hand trying to grab this bad boy. And I have to imagine seconds after the picture was taken (laughs) and the wraith or Wendigo did eat it or took a bite of it and would immediately put it back down and say like, I don't, I don't, no thanks y'all. I got work tomorrow. I can't have turbulent (laughs) sleep. I also love that they didn't necessarily tie this in with Halloween, but I can't see them releasing this book on like April or May. I think it's pretty specifically tied to Halloween, Trav. But it doesn't say like, happy Halloween, here's a fucked up hey, dream bud, burger. The last line of it is happy Halloween. That's the last line I read, bud. Well, I was I was too distracted too by that. I, w- I had already gone out and bought the burger, and I'm currently eating this it. This is a challenge so. to you, the listener, and uh, at home, get one of these bad boys, buy it, and then eat it, and then let us know how the dreams go. Don't give yeah. us a bunch of bullshit because I don't want to. I already don't want to hear about your dreams, but I will indulge you with a single tweet if you have eaten the Nightmare King before. Pixar didn't happen, obvs. Um, I I. I it just makes me so sad because they don't. The one thing they don't have in this press release about uh, why you should eat this sandwich is uh, a single syllable that, that indicates a positive flavor. There's <laughs> not. There's not a single syllable spared to indicate that this is a pleasurable <laughs> chewing and swallowing <laughs> experience. Like not a not a not an iota of it. Honestly, they also didn't add any especially spooky ingredients to it. It's just like, hey, turns out eating a metric like pound, like a pound and a half of protein right before bed can fuck you up. I also bet if you drank a jar of spaghetti sauce before bed, (laughs) you'd be pretty (laughs) fucked up. (laughs) We here at Prego are so excited to announce (laughs) nightmare sauce. (laughs) You just upturn this jar into your gaping maw. 
read the entire thing like the idiot you are and then go to sleep because, of course, what else are you going to do? Oh, my God. Let it wreak havoc on your body. You know what? My The, the terrible thing about eating a Nightmare King late at night is you're going to have a bad night, and I'm betting your early morning is not going to be too great <laughs> yeah, either. You're going to have you're gonna have yourself some daymares, too, I think, friend. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to have a, a, a waking nightmare in this one. So that is the available. Fucking shit. That was the best. That was the best press release you have ever brought to this segment, <laughs> October Justin. October 22nd. Go get one. I mean, it tastes like you'd expect a nightmare. I mean, it's just. I, no, that's the thing. It's just a burger with chicken and ba- like. It there's can't no just weird... be a burger with chicken. Like, they've cloaked the fact that they've sinned against God by saying it'll give you nightmares. Yeah, but you it can't just God put chicken nightmares. on a burger, right? It's, it's uh. um, I have a Yahoo here. Please, a bunch of people sent this one, and thank you, everybody. It's Yahoo Answers user Kendall who asks: Should teachers be allowed to swear? My friend in history made a huge mistake, and my thirty-year-old teacher said, "It's okay. We all fuck up sometimes." Oh, now, how do you know exactly how old your teacher is? This was not I, this was not information I ever attempted to ascertain yeah. from my teachers. I'm actually really disappointed, Griffin, because before you got to the end of the that sentence, I thought you were gonna say my friend messed up really bad in history, and the teacher was like, Well, you fucked that up. Oh, in a sort of mean way. Yeah, like, no, nah, that's not when Napoleon died. Ah, that's fucking wrong. I think just sort of regardless of cussing, the teacher should not be mean to the students. Um, okay. Because I saw Whiplash and, wait a minute, he got really good at drumming. Yes. Yeah. He's an Was that the message of that movie the whole time? Yeah. Anyway, teachers should be allowed to cuss, though, for real, I think. I think the kids would pay more attention, huh? I mean, I guess. But also, I think that what the history teacher is demonstrating there is like, hey, I can tell this student's down and like the stand and deliver moment is here is like, I said the F word and they're gonna be like, whoa, Mr. D is totally cool. And like now we're like peers because he used the F word and now is. I don't feel so bad because now he fucked up and I'm gonna get him fired. And what's awesome, you do this, your teacher does this, all of your grades turn around in a way that the, the country has never seen before. This becomes the curriculum. The teachers association just starts spreading this nationally. Y'all, you gotta cuss. It, t- it turns yeah. it turns the whole thing around. This is this is a silver bullet for fixing America's education problems. You just gotta start cussing in class. And there's gonna be a lot of teachers, guys, who aren't gonna be very good at it. Who don't oh, yeah. want who don't want to do it. This yeah. is like stodgy old Mr. Henderson who's teaching algebra back in back in my high school, and he's like, ah, well, if you want to find out how big the triangle is, it oh, hold on, piss. <laughs> okay, so you got to look at the one end of it. I love that. Y'all ever have any teachers that swore? Hell yeah, I did. I had a teacher put a cigarette out on his tongue for the class. Hell yes. Yeah, Ferg. Ferg ruled. Ferg also showed us how he could flip a lit cigarette back into his mouth, close his mouth to hide the cigarette, then flip the lit cigarette back out. Fuck yeah, um, Ferg. That's Fergalicious. Yeah. yeah. He, I'm not saying he was a good role model or anything, but it's still pretty cool. Um, he did teach history real good. I had, um, I had a gym teacher who was also my homeroom teacher for four years who I did hear the word, I did hear him say candy ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, was that Coach uh, We don't have to name names, my friend. Yeah. Oh, okay. But no, it was Coach It was Coach. <laughs> my favorite thing, side note, that uh, I won't, uh, now I say we're not naming names, but the person who taught my driver's ed class, uh, we had to say, I remember it being a pretty important test. I can't remember what it was exactly. But while we're all sitting there quietly, he put on Midnight Train to Georgia, like on a loop. That's good. As we're like taking what I remember to be a fairly important test. And I think around like the second or third time the song played, he just began quietly singing along with it. It is the single most distracting thing that has ever happened to me well, in a classroom. Was it a, and I have ADD. Was it a test about distracted driving, maybe? It might have been. That's good shit right there. That's good teaching. Yeah. I think the, I think he's earned a few cusses. Yeah. Maybe that's the system. If you do good at teaching and you turn the kids' grades around, you get X number of curses for the next year. And you, tr- you can tr- trade them in like old tickets. 
Woohoo! That's why you can save them all up and just spend the whole day. Just fuck, whole fuck, day. fuck, 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 <laughs> fuck, and then retire. Um, this is my last day of teaching. I'm 65. I haven't cussed yet, but I have a thousand curse tickets. Fuck, 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 I need everybody to to uh, just very quickly open up your uh, calendar app du jour. We all have a, a brief aside to the listener while we're doing this. Um, the We all have shared calendars to help us keep track of our schedules. It's all of us, and it includes our dad. Um, mm-hmm. So, brothers, have you got your calendars open? I do. Yes. I need you to steer on over to October 30th. Okay. Uh, yes, and te- you have discovered what I discovered. And what the yes. fuck? Tell me about the all-day appointment that Dad has on the thirtieth of October. It says Juice B Day, Scraps B Day. Now, in case you didn't know, that is Justin's nickname and my nickname. And also, in case you didn't know, our birthdays are the eighth of, of November. November. <laughs> so our dad is not even. It's not. Um, He's just got it completely wrong, had not he? Yeah, he's fucked it up about as bad as you can. Now, wait, this is so important. And we have to make sure he never listens to this episode. Because you guys are in prime position for double presents. Oh, yeah. You guys are in position for double daddy presents. And as we all know, daddy give the best presents. And you're in position to get two of them each, boys. Don't, <laughs> oh, fu- don't okay. fuck this up. This. Uh, all right, everyone listening, on the 30th, Tweet at Justin and I, like, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Travis and Justin. That's not our birthday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just when our dad has the wrong day in his calendar <laughs> that he shares with us about. <laughs> I'm just but, gonna, but it's not a week. It's not even close. Like, right. It's, it's, it's not a week off. It's like nine days. It's the most odd. It's quite off. I hear what <sighs> I am going to do, though. All right, what I am going to do is I'm going to create a calendar item in mine that says Travis's birthday on <laughs> that day, just as so Dad is fully bought into our birthday being October 30th. Mm, I like that. Okay, um, I'll do the same. Travis, you do the same. All right. So that's the ruse, that's, I think. Folks, that's going to... Much Squad Junior! Oh, boy. We got a double... Uh, Burger King did another one this week, and I just wanted Jesus to like Christ. duck in on it. Yeah, no, this is very quick. Most Squad Junior. Uh, Burger King launched the Philly Cheese King nationwide, Ex- and it's of course you know a burger meant to emulate the the Philly cheese steak sandwich that's so beloved by Philadelphia. Um, this sandwich. Is uh, uh, Burger King? It says is bringing their flame grill grilling expertise to the traditional Philly cheesesteak recipe. The brand created this innovation based on the classic recipe, using more than a half pound of flame grilled 100% beef, caramelized onions, and American cheese. Despite taste test approvals from Philadelphians, one restaurant in Philadelphia opted out of selling it completely to honor the traditional recipe. So on huh. October 25th. The Philly Cheese King will not be sold at the Burger King restaurant located at 15 South 8th Street, Philadelphia, until otherwise overturned by the Burger King brand. Wait. Wow. So Hold they, on. Yes. 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 Griffin. They've released a press release to put this one franchise on blast? It is possible, but it's intentional. So... I mean, yeah, except that they are, they've put this message out intentionally, I guess because they're playing with this one. Their la- the plan with the last burger was um, it'll give you nightmares because of the different beefs. They mm-hmm. <laughs> have four different kinds of beef in you this one. You got chicken beef, chicken you got bacon beef, beef, bacon beef, beef egg cheese beef. beef. Yeah. Um, and then with this one, it's, it's a sin against tradition and cuisine such that a city has st- risen up against this burger <laughs> because it's such a crime and anyway that's our sales pitch for this one is that we've besmirched uh this other food and ruined it so bad that one burger king and, hates it 
And this one chicken shit store. This one small step chicken shit store has stood up against us in the most powerful. Like and, honestly, I'm inspired. And know? how's that in? How's that press release end again? Until until what? The Philly Cheese King will be available at. Pre- oh no no no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, Gary. Yes, it says the Philly Cheese King will not be sold at the BK <laughs> Restaurant located at 15 South 8th Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, until otherwise overturned by the Burger King brand. <laughs> okay, so bur- the, uh, the Burger King's a fun <laughs> figure. Sometimes he sneaks up on you and he gives you a burger while you're, you know, uh, trying to put your kids to bed, and he wakes up your kids and they start yelling. Uh, he's fun. We all have a lot of fun with him, but he sure does have his boot on all of our necks, huh? Yeah. He could Apparently, do- also, I, I assumed it was a monarchy, but it sounds like they have some kind of judicial system where they're going to take this to, like, Burger Supreme Court. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're going to fight him all the way. Um, and Can you give the address of that Philly store one more time? Because I want everyone to go buy a bunch of food from them yeah. and support their efforts as, like, the last... Like sandbag wall against the rising tide of Burger King's power. Yeah, is there also a, a Burger King that doesn't do the nightmare burger? Because I want to support them <laughs> fungibly. There are, uh, you know, Griffin. I don't know, but there are many food chains that don't that you should definitely get out there and support. Um, I mean, it's just a wild, it's a wild publicity scheme for Burger King to force this one restaurant in Philadelphia to not sell their great new burger, but they can sell the Nightmare Burger. So I do have to question the ethics of this Burger King store. If they continue to sell the Nightmare Burger, that will hurt. We've sold the Nightmare. We've sold the chicken thing. What more do they want? No. This far, no farther. We sold the ex- Todd, we can't, we can't deny (laughs) the King's ruling. Just watch me. Mr. Burger King, Mr. Burger King. Yes? <laughs> Todd in Philadelphia, <laughs> sir, he's, he said no. What? <laughs> he said no to me? <laughs> put, yes, sir. Put a, well, we'll see about this. Put out a press release. I'll crush Todd <laughs> under my heel like the cockroach that he is. Mr. Mr. Burger King, I'm so sorry. Yes, I'll never go yes. against your wishes again. Please, a, a, a toast. A toast to your health. Whoa. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> morning glow, morning glow. That's from Pippin after the king dies. <laughs> Folks, is gonna do it for us because we've started referencing Pippin, so it's time for us to. <laughs> oh, as you know, that's our with, normal bell that signals the end of every episode. We two out of the last three have got a little bit of Pippin in them, so that's a good streak. Good enough for me. Uh, thank you so much for listening to our program. We hope you have enjoyed yourself. Uh, we have. Can I say some very important things, Justin? Uh, yes, yes, I guess. One, if you are in the U.S. and you are an adult who is registered to vote, go vote November sixth. This is the reminder that that is the day for voting. A lot of states have early voting open right now. Absentee ballots that you can go do. I've already voted. I voted uh, by mail because I'm going to be traveling on the sixth. So go vote. Next, we have a McElroy mailing list that you can sign up for to get a newsletter containing a bunch of information about, I don't know, all kinds of upcoming stuff. It's not a pyramid scheme. I don't know who keeps saying that, but it is not a pyramid scheme. You can go to bit.ly slash McElroy mail and sign up for it there. Um, I have another Secret Society show happening here in Cincinnati, November 16th. I'm going to have a bunch of amazing guests, but I can't tell you who they are. You have to show up and find out. You can get your tickets for that at bit.ly slash cuss November 2018, C-U-S-S November 2018. And also go ahead and send in your questions for our Austin and Denver live shows. Yes. Make sure to put Austin or Denver in the subject line. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, Wednesday is the last day you can pre-order our uh, pin of the month. It's the great job pin. Uh, all, all of our family's proceeds from the pin will be donated to the Unidos Disaster Relief and Recovery Program to support Puerto Rico. Uh, it's a great job pin. You're going to love it, and you only have until Wednesday to get it. After that, it's done. That's the way the pins of the month work, which also means that we're going to have a new pin on Thursday. So check it totally out at McElroyMerch.com. Speaking of pre-order, the uh, Adventure Zone Book 2, Murder on the Rockport Limited, is available for pre-order now. You can get it at theadventurezonecomic.com or just like search for it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or 
wherever, and go ahead and get that pre-order. It's going to be amazing. You're going to love it. Also, go to bit.ly uh, forward slash Sawbones book the and get the book. Sawbones book. The the saw, 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 bit.ly forward slash the Sawbones book. Get the Sawbones book and fucking read it and get some medical knowledge in your brain and some humor in your gut. I uh, also want to say that Target has apples for sale for $4. I'm looking at a web ad on Yahoo Answers right now, and Target very badly wants me to know, hey, come on down to Target. We have apples for $4. <laughs> Thank you, Target. That's good advertising. Uh, Griffin, do you have a last question for us? Uh, yeah, and it's why won't you let me thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for these for theme song oh. and set a departure off the album putting the days to bed, and to thank MaximumFun.org for letting us uh, have a show on the network. It's real, it's a real good network, and there's a lot of great shows there. MaximumFun.org. All right, here's that final Yahoo. So Yahoo was sent in by Merritt Palmer. Thank you, Merritt. It's Yahoo Answers user Gwen who asks, "Whom is Madden, and why does he get all the football games?" <laughs> Uh, <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me, kiss your dad, square on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. In a world dominated by dude bro movie podcasts, only one podcast is brave enough to call bullshit. Who shot ya? The podcast that dares to say that white dude's opinions aren't the only opinions. If you have a movie pass, like, get a ticket to it to support Taraji, then go home. Ant-Man seems so unnecessary at this point. Ant-Man is like a ketchup packet too many. Who shot ya? With Ricky Carmona. I wanted to see Wolverine kick ass and eat some popcorn and have a good time. Alonzo Duralde. Is this Andy Richter? Yeah! Oh my a god! And April Wolf. I love wild things because we get to see <laughs> Kevin Bacon's dick. <laughs> Who shot ya? Listen every Friday on Maximum Fun or wherever you get your podcasts.